Okay, this is a support video for my Reddit post that's going to accompany it. Uh, for those who are coming here not from Reddit, who are just searching Ender 3 MKS upgrade. Uh, I followed Michael Laws on Teaching Tech. I followed his video on doing the MKS Gen L swap for the Creality uh, 1.13 board I did have some issues I'm currently having some issues I'm gonna talk about the first issue I had uh, his board and the board in his affiliate link the boards have changed so pay attention to the pinouts uh, the wires might be a little bit different they might be inverted uh, you might have a positive where a negative should be and whatnot but just pay attention look at your hardware because it can vary, it might be different. Uh, okay, the overall goal of this project is, this is a two by four basics I bought off Amazon. They provide the plastic, you provide the wood, you can build whatever you want. I'm gonna enclose this. This be wood here, wood there, wood here, and on the front, uh, plexi doors, maybe, maybe foam, I don't know. And up there I might have lights coming out. So to be totally enclosed, the five, my Ender 5 is still working fine, the 3 is broken down, and it's trying to come online. Uh, I'm having some issues, and that's where this video comes in. So I'm, let me sh right to the chase, uh, and I'll follow up with bad stuff at the end. When I, the issue I'm having right now is if I go to Auto Home, this is just going to show you the movements that I'm getting. So Auto Home. Really big movements. I mean, it's moving up 100 millimeters, rising up. They are very exaggerated movements when I'm doing auto home. When I, I'm gonna do the bed level here in a second and you're gonna see pretty much exact same thing. But this time, I believe the uh, Z-axis is going to rise up almost to the max height. And then it's going to come down screaming fast. And it's going to hit the BL touch. It's going to come back up. It's going to come down again. And sometimes, not every time it does this, but sometimes it, it actually hits the nozzle, grinds for a second, and then lifts back up. And then it's like, oh, sorry. <laughs> That's annoying, and I think that might be some introduction of noise from these extension cables. I've got the capacitors right here to uh, fix the noise problem. And now, a lot of people do already know that when you put extension cables on here, you're making a giant antenna, and every bit of electronic noise, electronic noise is going to affect the in-stop switches. Uh, I did have issues with that where if I was trying to do auto home the gantry would come down it would ride back and forth and everything and it would fault within five seconds of starting that with an error and I'd have to actually do a manual reset on the control head there for everything to reset. Uh, you can go into the Marlin firmware you can uncomment the end stop noise filter option and it will work past that and it will run fine but you get inaccuracies to where if you try to auto home it might go home but it might not always register as home as zero or home might be off a little bit it, it explains in the firmware right there above the uh that comment line uh, unfortunately i don't have it up on my screen anymore now uh this is what I'm trying to fix. Now I posted links on Reddit, which I will link Reddit in the description below to my comment. I also provided links to my configuration.h and my configuration advanced.h. Uh, those are just text files. So if somebody can look those over and tell me where I'm messing up, which I'm gonna show you the big problem, the exaggerated movements, auto home, now, I'm going to do an auto bed level, and you're going to see it's going to come down, probably hit the bed, like I said, and then it's going to do the three point, uh, sorry, nine point alignment. So let me get that going real quick. Let's see, it seems like it's all ready. Ready.
Last time it hit and it ground. So that that is obviously that is something I've noticed with the uh, extension cables. That is one of the problems. It tells sometimes it hits the bed, it grinds a little bit. Uh, sometimes it works fine. So this is going to go through. And do that. I've already got my octopi hooked up, so I'm going to try to print. The results are always different. Every time I record this video, I get a different result. Like I said. Five minutes ago, when I did this exact same video, before I started shooting this second take, the actual nozzle came down when it did initial bed level height, and it crashed into the bed and uh, ground down some gear. <laughs> okay, now it's good to go. So let me go over to uh, uh, OctoPrint up. That's where I shut it off. Now I do still need to change my uh, Z height offset. Connect. And I hate that you can't. Bed level test. Let's do that one. I'm still waiting to connect. It's a little bit. Okay, there it goes. Let's see if we can print that one. Now I think it's just code in my. Cura that I already established for the printer before I did the. Uh... Let's see if it's gonna hit this time. <laughs> yep, there she hit. It's always different. And then it's like, oh my bad. And it's gonna go back and it moves scary fast. Like I said, I still need to change my uh, Z height offset. It's still at zero for the probe, which I think it's got to be 1.56, almost two millimeters. Now the bed's heating. Of course, this takes forever, and unfortunately, you can't stop. Uh, you can't pause a video for YouTube when you're doing a YouTube on your phone. So, uh, while I'm waiting for the bed to heat up, I hit 70 after I added that glass bed uh, and winter came along, I had to go from, from 60 to 70. 60 was working pretty good, but then 70 started working so much better. The uh, crap down there, so there's my octopi. It's waiting to be mounted up, all these wires have got to be mounted up out of the way so let's be all clean Another thing you'll see down here is a few spare parts I've still got to put on I've got uh, those are extension cables for the SD cards those right there down here I've got those are displays I got another display for this one that's gonna be changed out probably I've got another octopied or Raspberry Pi B plus down here uh, some Stepper motor smoothers, I believe those are, and those might be the voltage regulators. I don't know. I know I got stepper motor smoothers, voltage regulators. Uh, you know, motor dampeners, which I bought those just because everybody was saying they're awesome. You know, they work fantastic. But you know what? I really don't see the need for it. I mean, if this was next to the baby's room, maybe, <laughs> but. It's in my office. It's the noise is not that bad, but I got the smoothers because everybody's saying the uh, salmon skin on your prints will improve. So yeah, I'll stick those in there after I get everything else. Once the once I'm happy that the baseline is set and the printer is working fine, then I'll I'll upgrade everything else. But my Ender Three, if I've had it for. Uh, Maybe close to nine months, maybe maybe a little bit less, maybe a little bit more. She's worked pretty good. I've never been really happy with the Ender 3, even stock. I mean, right after stock, that was the Pets Fang was one of the first things I printed. Uh, I got kind of tired of leveling the bed once a week, so I got the BL Touch. 
I, I have replacement springs. I've just been too lazy to put them on there. What that's going to get done to before I do the offset, the Z axis offset. The uh, Ender 5, though, my Ender 5 has been an absolute champ. I have done nothing to it, it's completely stock. The only thing I did was I mounted the, uh, the filament holder over here on this side versus being on top over on this side because I thought that was just that just seemed dumb to have it up on top. And I changed the motor, the extruder motor mount. I do have uh, direct drives available, mounting kit available for my Ender 3. Uh, I've heard plus and minuses. I mean, every time you hear a plus, you hear a uh, equally compelling minus but not to do it. So, okay, we've hit hit temperature finally and I've had different results every time I don't know what to expect I've had the bed the nozzle sweep down both sides and spit out a bunch of filament over here on this side uh, other times I had it totally skip that process altogether and go straight to the center to start to print the, the object now now it's I have changed models so maybe it has a model problem Maybe I did something on one model that I didn't do in another one. Changed the profile of the firmware or something. But uh, this should be a bed level test. And I should be able to do live leveling with it. Maybe. Any second now. 70 on the bed, run it to 10, there we go. Yep, I get a repeat. Now, I know she is way off. I've still got to do the Z offset. That's fine. But she is feeding way too fast. And that's got to be that specific code. See, now it says, okay, we're done. We printed your bed level test. I didn't even have time to do a live level on that one. Why is she going up? So... Okay, I'm going to totally dump everything I have on the profiles, any startup or end stop codes because they're getting amplified. I mean, this is way too high. It's supposed to raise, I think, like 20 millimeters off the print and then push the bed forward. But okay, there's my issues. If you could help me figure out why motions are exaggerated why when I do a bed level, why it wants to jump up 80 to 100 millimeters and then come back down between every point. Uh, why it's moving so fast while it's doing that. I'd rather it move nice and slow. Uh, if I can figure those things out, I think I'm almost done doing this modification and then I can go on to the next. Okay, I'll post the links and all that stuff after I edit this on the PC.